And so for anyone listening that doesn't know what microdosing is, microdosing is really when you take a subperceptual dose of psychedelic medicine. So this could be LSD, this could be psilocybin, meaning that the dose is so low that it's beyond your ability to perceive it. So it will not feel like a trip. It doesn't feel like the movies where you're seeing, you know, the walls melt. You're really not going to have a psychedelic experience. You're just going to feel like a lift in mood or, you know, other things that we can talk about later, but you're not going to hallucinate. So these low doses of psilocybin have been reported to um, be taken so many times in history from the 16th century. And it is one that is being studied a lot now. There's a lot more research coming out about psilocybin and about the benefits and about how it can improve your life. And they say that through the research, a lot of the benefits of psilocybin microdosing are an elevation in mood, enhanced creativity, um, less need for caffeine. You're more tolerant of others. You might have a greater openness when connecting to others. You're more kind, empathetic. You can tap into a sense of joy, ease, and grace. And so it is really the ability to, um, from a neurological perspective, rewire your brain using neuroplasticity. So the component in psilocybin promotes your ability to use different neural pathways than what you would normally do. So this is where kind of, you know, the woo-woo meets the science aspect where you're able to rewrite old stories and patterns leveraging psilocybin because you're going to take a new neural pathway. So say your limiting belief is, you know, um, I, I'm too much. Maybe that's the belief. I'm too much. Whatever the too muchness is for you you have a well-trodden neural pathway that says, I am too much. You know, you walk in the room, I am too much. You know, they're not going to like me, I'm too much. And psilocybin gives you the opportunity with conscious awareness to create a new neural pathway that would maybe say, you know, I'm perfect just the way I am or whatever the affirmation could be. So there's a lot of information on how these new neural pathways and the rewriting of them can be really powerful for your life in a lot of different ways. So Mm -hmm. before we got into our conversation, I wanted to make sure that people really understood, you know, what it was and how it works on the brain um, so they could really get a better view of the benefits that we've seen in our process through it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's just this um, lifting of like all the static and and. I, it kind of feels like a super highway when our thoughts are just kind of running the show. And so it just kind of lifts it. And I've just found much more flow in my days where like at the end of the day, I'm like, it's like, it puts me in my true MG state mm-hmm. where I have like kind of this unlimited energy. I'm really like kind of following what is going on, lighting me up throughout the day. And then by the end, I'm like, it's like that satisfaction mm-hmm. because I also think I'm less distracted when I'm microdosing. Mm-hmm. I'm not finding myself on social media as much. I'm not just mindlessly doing things like there's. So I think at the end of the day, I'm less exhausted because I do think that like makes you so tired. Yeah, that friction between things and Mm -hmm. the friction between checking and scrolling and all of that. Yeah, I found that you have access to this joy that you can tap into on a daily basis and that if you're in your joy, it doesn't mean you're less productive. And I think there's that part of me that's like, okay, if I'm having a lot of fun or if I'm really enjoy or if I'm enjoying myself, then am I really working? Am I pushing Mm -hmm. hard enough? Am I being productive enough? So understanding that you could have access to this amount of joy on a daily basis is like incredibly powerful. Yeah. And I've known a lot of people to um, try microdosing before going on to like medication, you know, kind of if they're experiencing anxiety or depression, having this as an option, not to say that medication um, isn't a great option. I think it is, but um, this provides an alternative maybe on the path, you know, to exploring how you can support um, your anxiety or depression. Yeah. I also realized that, you know, the repressing or denying or minimizing of emotions that you have takes a lot of energy, psychically, emotionally, mentally, and physically. And that when you allow yourself to feel, it doesn't take very long mm-hmm. and you can move yes. much more quickly than like all of the energy that is draining you. So when we think about how tired people are, I think people are, are tired all the time. I can be, you know, I've gone through periods where I've been really tired. It's like, what can we check in with? Our caffeine intake, mm-hmm. you know, our social media consumption, our sleep schedule. There's so much on like the wellness part of it. 
And then there's also like the psychic emotional part of it where it's like, are you holding the container for multiple relationships? Are you psychically spending a lot of energy thinking about one topic or one thing? Are you spending a lot of time repressing emotions that need to be felt? Mm -hmm. And how could the allowance of feeling the emotions allow more energy and chi into your body because you're allowing things to really flow? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I don't know what the stat is, but like the the length of time. Yeah, something like that where it's like the length of time that you, when an emotion is felt, yeah, it just passes so quickly. Um, yeah, I found that as well. And I also thought it was, and I know you 90 second pause. According to Harvard brain scientists, Dr. Taylor, 90 seconds is all it takes to identify an emotion and allow it to dissipate while you simply notice it. Yeah. I mean, that's profound. Profound. Think of, yeah, I just think of like my, our parents' generation I know. and older where it's like, yeah, so much has happened in their lives and like the not feeling of it and how it's like manifested in their bodies and stuff. It's just, it's wild, but yeah. Um, and I also think with microdosing, um, it's important to intuitively move through this microdosing journey. And what I mean by that is I knew when I needed to take a break. I knew when I needed to integrate. Um, I knew the cadence at which I was supposed to take it. Um, because at first I was like going every day Mm -hmm. (laughs) and that's, that's okay if that feels right for you. But, um, I found that a more measured cadence of like, whether it was every other day or every two or three days, um, felt a lot better. And then I noticed like the human part of me be like, but, oh God, I didn't microdose today. I'm going to suck, you know, kind of be like that and just noticing, yes what that is and not wanting to be dependent on the feeling. That is like a true substance experience. Yeah. Because people think about that with drinking. Mm -hmm. Who am I going to be when I'm not buzzed? I remember when I had my MDMA moment in my life and I remember being like, I'd, you know, you'd be in the moment and be so happy. And then there'd be the thought like, this is going to end. Yeah. It's gonna Tomorrow come down. it's going to come down. And you have that. You're like, oh. Yeah, totally. Who am I going to be without the thing? Totally. That's huge. Totally. But I think it's important with this to really work with the plant in that way and trust yourself. Um, because I do, you know, based on what I was kind of guided um, by our healer and and just my own intuition was like, you just need time to allow all that's kind of moved and, and resituated to like settle. Um, and also a period of time to really trust that you don't necessarily need to be on that all the time, to do that all the time in order to feel the way you felt. So that was important because I, I definitely in the beginning felt myself being like, I need it today. hundred <laughs> percent. Especially when we cool. were recording. Yeah, dude. We get in crazy vortexes crazy. when we were microdosing. We'd look at each other and be like, dude, ah! I, there was times I felt bad for our guests. There was a period, actually, someone asked. <laughs> I got a DM one time and she was like, hey, were you microdosing in X episode? And I was like, yeah. She's like, yeah, I could. Yeah, I could tell. Like, I don't know if your guests could keep up. How crazy. <laughs> it was insane. I know. I always say, and even there was someone that we saw today, the leader of the class that we took, uh-huh. um, the workout class that we attended. there's an energy frequency that people have when they've done plant medicine Mm -hmm. and it's, you can tell it's like in their field. Yeah. And it's like, because you and I were both doing it, our field had the medicine. And so we're kind of getting into this experience where we're like building on each other. I mean, we went to that dinner that one night and our poor dinner guest, it was me, Lindsay and someone else Uh having dinner at the proper hotel. Oh my God. Yeah. And we were (laughs) beyond. It was, it was like a buildup of microdosing for days. Yes. Caffeine. Yes. And we were like losing our minds losing laughing. It. it was amazing. It was amazing. But our, <laughs> our friend was not. And they were unwell. <laughs> it was like, I'm so sorry about I this. I know. But yeah, you had that feeling where we're like, yo, we're fucking ripping and rolling. This feels so good. And then, you know, the ego or that part of you, that fear part's like, oh, what about when you don't do this? Yeah. What about when this goes away? Yeah. You know, that whole thing that. And that's kind of probably a neural pathway as well. Mm-hmm. The when does this go away? Mm-hmm. You know, part that's like available for us to always look at. Yeah. Thank you so much for tuning in to Morning Microdose by Almost 30. We hope you enjoyed waking up. 
As always, we encourage you to take what resonates and leave the rest. If you enjoyed this trip, tune into the full episode on the Almost 30 podcast. All episode information can be found in the show notes. Make sure to subscribe. And if this becomes a part of your morning routine, be sure to share it with a friend. We have new inspiring doses Monday through Friday. Follow us on Instagram at Morning Microdose and follow Almost 30 at Almost 30 Podcast. Thanks for listening. We'll see you in the vortex.